Hello. So after the last 11 videos or so, we've been talking about how to take derivatives, but not really what they're useful for. And in this video, I'm going to talk about something called a maxima and something called a minima point on a function, and how derivatives can be very useful when finding them. Alright, so let's say we have some function. It's not going to ha- I'm not going to give it a value. say it, this point is undefined here, and then it slopes down. Alright, and it's a weird function, it's a very weird function, but it's a function we're dealing with. Some f of x, right? Alright, so we have some y is equal to f of x here, some function. This is not meant to be overlapping. Yep. Uh, now, the maxima and the minima points are used to find the highest points on a function and the lowest points on a function. So, I'm going to say that this is probably our highest point, right? Because we're assuming that these are going down to negative infinity. This would be then our global, which means across the entire graph to infinity, global maximum. All right. Now, there are also things called relative maximum and relative minimum points. Now, our minimum points themselves, our global minimum points, are down at negative infinity. We can't really define them. But a local minimum point and a local maximum point are defined between intervals. So let's say we have an x interval from here to here. This is our x interval. This is our delta x. Right? So if we only care about this section of the function, where is our local minimum point? Well, that's on the vertex. Right? Local minimum. Alright, so just in that small interval, that is the lowest point. And similarly, this is our local maximum. Now, there's also a fancy term for this point here, when the slope is undefined. If you notice, taking the derivatives down here, at a vertex, the derivative is zero. Right? And here, it's approached at the same angle from both sides. It's also zero. So, right? The d dx at this point is equal to zero. And then, you know, the d over dx is equal to zero here. Not actually the d, the df, or dy dx. But here, it's undefined. You're at this point that doesn't have a slope. You're just jumping from some slope, not, it's not quite like that, to another slope. It doesn't, it just, sw it just switches automatically, it doesn't transition, and so you don't really have a slope there because you can't just bring your values closer and closer and closer and keep taking the slopes, that doesn't work. Because you're just completely going to a different point. You can't approach it without being completely inaccurate. So, this is also called a critical point. And, um, well, you might not run into functions like this very often. You may, and it will be important to recognize these types of things. But, how do you recognize a local maximum point or a local minimum point if you don't have a graphing uh, board or calculator or whatever? Well, I'm going to show a different function for us to look at that is a bit more familiar. Alright, so let's say we have f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 4, right? Alright, so 4 
It's our y-intercept here. x is 0, x is 1, it's 3, x is negative 1, it's 3. So on x is 2, it's, ne it's 0, negative 2 is 0, right? So we get our parabola here that we're so very familiar with, and so on. I could define more points, right? When x is 3, it's negative 5, and 2, 3, 4, 5. That's probably as low as we're going to go. Alright, so here's our parabola. Now, we know, because of the negative exponential uh, decrease, the, the negative increase, you know, uh, that these two areas of the function go down to infinity. So we don't have to worry about x sloping up over here at some point. If that's not going to happen, the function doesn't let it happen just logically. So we know that wherever this is, is most definitely our vertex. We also know, because of our equation, that this is the y-intercept, and so we could easily say 4. But how do we find this without just using the y-intercept? And there will be grounds when you can't do that. Well, the derivative of f of x dx will be equal to 0 there. So what's the derivative of f uh, with respect to x, right? That is negative 2x. And that is going to be equal to 0. So now, that's a bit obvious. It has to be x for that to be 0. So x is equal to 0. And y and f of x is hence equal to 4. So that, that's the x we have a minimum point at. Now what if we have a slightly different function? And I don't think I'm going to graph it this time. So that we can get enough. Now that we have an understanding. So let's say f of x is equal to... That was our maximum point. x squared minus... I'm sorry, yes. 4x plus 2. Alright. And we knew that last one was a maximum point because of its graph. But how do we know that something's a maximum point without its graph? Well, alright, so let's try to find Minimum, minimum point of this one. So, what's the derivative of this? 2x minus 4. Just, you know, by the power rule, is equal to 0. 2x is equal to 4. Since x at some point, whether it's minimum or maximum, is at, I'm sorry, 2. Right? That is either a minimum or a maximum point. But how do we know whether something's a minimum point or a maximum point? Well, I'm going to show you one more graph. Just to get an idea where we have some function here. Okay, so if we take the derivative of this function, we're finding basically how this is changing, right? You know, we take it up here, we know it's zero, right? So we know that at some point here it's a maximum point. We could put one down there, it's a minimum point, we wouldn't know which was which. We'd get two answers. And that would be because we had a quadratic term, and so we'd get two through the formula or through, you know, uh, other quadratic uh, solutions or solution methods. So how do we know? Well, we can take something called the double derivative. We can take the derivative and then the derivative of the derivative. Now what would that say? So the derivatives are changing all the time. So it's the rate of change of the derivatives. So let's say if it's positive, that means that the derivatives are getting higher, right? Because they're increasing. The rate of change is the the, the rate of change is positive, so they're gaining. So the derivatives are are increasing. And as we can see, the slopes are increasing. They're getting higher here. And now let's look over here. I'm going to use a different marker for this side. Um, right here, the slopes are decreasing. Decreasing. See? They're really high here. And they get lower and lower. They get to zero. And then they start decreasing. And then there's a point here 
called New Marker the inflection point. And that's where the double derivatives shifts from neg negative to positive. It goes from losing a slope to gaining a slope. All right, so what can we notice here? At a minimum point, slope is greater than zero. It's positive. That's our dy dx. And what can we notice about a maximum point? Right? Or double slope. Our double slope is negative, or our double derivative, which we could also write as d squared f dx squared. That's just fancy notation. Is greater than zero. All right. Over here, the double derivative is less than zero. All right, so we can use this knowledge to find out whether this is a minimum point or a maximum point. So, okay, let's take the double derivative of this function, or the derivative of the derivative, which is 2x minus 4. Well, just by the power rule, and we don't care about constants, that's x. No, I'm sorry, 2. That's 2. 2 is equal to our d squared f over dx squared. We don't put the f in the square because it's um, really just referring to the function. And that's positive, right? So that means this is a minimum point. So x is equal to 2 at a minimum. Exclamation mark. All right, so we know that x is equal to 2 at a minimum point. And in the next video, I'm going to show an example of how this can be used in real-life shipping applications. Goodbye.